Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem, which is part of uh, this week's weekly contest. Um, minimum operations to reduce integer to zero. So we have a positive integer n, and you can do any number, uh, you can do some operations any number of times. And these operations are just adding or subtracting a power of two from the, from the number that we get. Um, and the goal is to return the minimum number of operations we need to make to get n to be equal to zero. Um, so for example, if we take n equal to 39, one way to do it is to add two to the power of zero, which is just one, add that to n. So from one to 39, that gives us 40. And then we subtract two to the power of three, which is eight. Um, and so we get 32. And 32 is actually just two to the power of five. So if we subtract two to the, to the power of five, we get zero. And you can see here we did three operations, right? And this is this is actually the minimum possible number we can get, and so we return three. Um, um, the constraint n is really big, right? It can be up to ten to the power of five. So this rolls out anything that is O of n squared or two to the power of n, right? Um, so how can we solve it? Um, okay, so how do we solve this? So one thing to think about is this is asking us to do the minimum number of operations to reduce to zero, right? And so minimum number of operations is sort of, if we can convert this to a sort of implicit graph, we should be able to do this with BFS because BFS gives you the number of steps to get to something, right? And that sort of matches what we are being asked here. So let's try it with BFS, for example. Um, okay, so if we try with BFS, we need to find a couple of things. We need to find what are the nodes, and we need to find what are the edges, right? And from there, we should be able to do um, the BFS, because it will be just um, shortest path, right, from um, n to 0, right? With the steps being the just adding or subtracting uh, 2 to the power of x, some x value. And so here... Already we know the edges. The edges is just are all the powers of two, right? Because each time, right, when you have with n, when we reduce it, let's say to n i, right, we either add two to the power of i or subtract two to the power of i for, for some value of i. And so for every n, you can add or subtract any power of two. That is, of course, in the limit that we get, which is 10 to the power of 5, because there is no need to, to go beyond that, right? And so, and so immediately what we know here is that the edges are just um, adding or subtracting all powers of 2, right? Same thing here. Um, and what are the nodes? Well, nodes are all the values that we can get to by adding and subtracting 2 from n, right? So let's just call them values, right? All the values we can get to um, using these operations. Um, so if we do this, then it should it should work with BFS, right? Because, um, because what we will do is just we will start our queue with n, and we'll have a visited set as well that has n. Okay, and then we'll just, um, before the BFS, of course, we'll need to pre-calculate all the powers of 2 so that we don't calculate them each time for each node, right? So to calculate the powers of 2, we can just um, basically just have a list, let's call it powers list, right? And start with some value 1, and while we haven't reached the limit here, so while a is smaller than... Um, 10 to the power of 5, right? We can just keep saying uh, we have a value of i that represents the exponent, and each time we keep increasing i, and a is going to be 2 to the power of i, right? And each time we add i, so each time we add i to the, uh, a to the powers, right? So this is just to pre calculate powers. Once we have the pow powers here, for our BFS, we can just keep extracting the value from the Q. Right, and for each value we extract, we just check, right? If that value that we extract, of course, using pop left, if that value is equal to zero, 
right? Then we reached our destination and we can just return the number of iteration. Now, how do we get the number of operations? Well, we can usually in BFS, we just, it's, it's, it's the same as levels. So the operations here will be just the levels. Um, and the first level that we get a value of zero, that's the one w that we are going to return. And so here we just need to start out with the operation as zero. So this would be the value and this would be the number of operation to, okay? And so, and so with our BFS, we'll just extract the number and we'll extract the number of operations using pop left. Okay. Um, and then if this number is zero, we'll return the number of operations. Otherwise, we will just go through the neighbors. What are the neighbors? Well, the neighbors are all the powers of two, right? And we add them or subtract them, right? So basically, we'll just do something like P in powers. And we'll add it to value. So that's the first portion. And then another portion is to subtract because we have two possible operations, right? So this would be nim minus val. Basically, this will add these to the queue, right? Add these to the queue. The only thing we need to make sure of is that first, this doesn't exceed to 10 to the power of 5. So we need to make sure it's less than 10 to the power of 5. And this we need to make sure that it's not smaller than 0, so that the number is smaller than val. So that before adding it to the queue. And of course, since this is BFS, we will also need to make sure that these values are not in the visited set. Okay, but that's pretty much it. We will keep, we will basically for each value and we'll try all adding all the powers and subtracting all the powers as long as they are valid, right? Um, and then the first time we reach zero, we'll just return how many adds and subtract we had to do. And th that's just applying BFS um, and it will get to zero in the shortest possible path, right? Uh, because that's just the pro property of um, of BFS. I hope that made sense. So let's just implement it and make sure it passes test cases. Um, okay, so let's implement this. Um, so we said that we need powers, right? And we need to just keep track of the largest possible value. So that's 10 to the power of 5 according to the constraint in the problem. And just we need A and I. So this would be just to keep track of the powers. And while a is smaller than largest, right, we want to keep adding it to the powers list. So append a. And we each time we want to increase the exponent. So let's actually just name this the exponent to make it easier. And so we'll increment the exponent. Um, and then a is going to be 2 to the power of that exponent. And now we'll start our BFS. So we'll start with the dq here. Um, that starts out with the initial value of n. And we need the number of operations as well. So here, this takes basically both the value and the number of operations. Okay. And now we'll just go through. We need uh, our visited set as well because this is BFS. And we'll just do normal BFS, which is going through the queue. Um, and we'll do it level by level. So think about this as the current level. So we'll go through the entire current level first. And so to do that, we'll just go through the length of Q. Okay. Um, and now we will just extract from our BFS, right? We'll get the value, which is number, and we'll get the operations. And now we will, um, of course, add it to the visited set. Um, and we want to check if it's zero. So here, let's check first if it's zero, because that means we arrived. So if it's zero, we just want to return the number of operations because that means the current level ha has the value zero. And so we just need to return the, the number of operations it took us to get there. And we are guaranteed that this is the shortest path because we are using BFS. Um, and now we will try all the neighbors possibilities, right? So basically adding and subtracting all possible powers of two because that's what the problem asks us to find is the optimal um, uh, adding a subtracting to get to the zero. Um, and so here, these are the neighbors basically. Now we want to add here. So this is the add portion. Okay. And so we want to add value, but we don't want it to exceed the limit, which is the largest value here. So I'll just make sure it doesn't first before adding it to the queue. Um, and need, we need to also make sure that it's not in our visited set. Okay. 
Um, and here, let's just move our adding to the visited set um, to here. Uh, we need to make sure that num plus val not in visited. And of course, here we also need n to be in the visited set, the initial number. So if, if all of those are true, we add it, uh, which is num plus val, we add it to the queue and to the visited set. So to the queue, we add both num plus val and the number of operations just increase it by one because we just did an add operation, right? Um, okay, so that's for the add. Now let's do the subtract. So subtract, again, similar, except we are subtracting the value. So here, this would be minus, but we need to make sure that this is positive, right? Um, and then we need to make sure that it's not in the visited set. And so we just add it to the visited set as well. Okay. Um, and that should be it pretty much, just normal BFS. This is going through the neighbors, right? Um, and now let's run it. Okay, looks good so far, let's submit. And that passes our test cases, okay? Um, yeah, so once you you unlock that BFS doesn't need to be like, the problem doesn't need to tell you that it's exactly a graph. If it has the property and you can sort of have the neighbors and you are looking for something like shortest path, then you should try to apply BFS. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for today's problem. Please like and subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye.